since you hit play on Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast today. I want to make sure that you know that our free self-love challenge is happening in February 2024 right here on the podcast. The goal of this challenge is to make creating an intentional practice of self-love even easier than ever simply by plugging in your earbuds and listening for about 10 minutes per day. But for the full experience, you're going to want to get the scorecard so you can enter the giveaways, get the daily journal prompt sent to your inbox and join us for the live wrap up podcast recording. Yes, you get to join me in the studio and record the podcast together live. It is all free. Go to wifeteachermommy.com slash self love challenge to sign up. Again, it is completely free. You'll get a daily reminder with the free 10 minute coaching each day and your journal prompt, and you will see a transformation over these 14 days. It is not only going to impact your relationship with yourself, but as I'll teach during the challenge, it is going to impact every single other relationship you have in your life, your relationship with other people, your relationship with teaching, that energy is going to impact every single other aspect of your life. So sign up at wifeteachermommy.com slash self love challenge. It's free. Now let's get to the episode. You are listening to episode number 65 of Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast, weight loss tips for teachers that you probably haven't heard before with Corinne Crabtree. You think you know about weight loss. The common thought is that it's all about calories in versus calories out, but then why do so many of us struggle with it? Corinne has helped tens of thousands of women with weight loss, many of whom have been teachers, and she is going to show us the root cause of why we think we can't help ourselves with treats in the faculty room, why we emotionally eat when we're stressed out with teaching, and most importantly, where we go from there. Welcome to Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast. I'm Kelsey Sorensen, a former elementary teacher and current homeschool mom. And even though I've been a resource creator since 2014, I've realized that printables alone aren't all you need in order to thrive as a teacher or homeschool parent. That's why I also created this show and got certified as a life coach to help you finally kick burnout to the curb and feel confident with whatever challenges come your way. With the right mindset strategies and new teaching inspiration, you're going to be well on your way to your best teacher life. Now let's go. Okay, can I just tell you, I am so excited to share the interview I just did with Corinne Crabtree with you. It was such a good time. She is an incredible guest. That's why she has such an amazing podcast with a huge following. We're going to be talking lots of weight loss tips and strategies that are a lot different than what you probably heard before using programs like maybe you've tried Weight Watchers or maybe you've done calorie tracking or whatever. But today we're really looking at the root causes of why we emotionally eat, what's happening in our bodies, what is going on when there are treats in the faculty room and we feel like we just can't help it and so much more. But before we dive in, I want to give you a quick reminder about what is going on right now with the Educate and Rejuvenate wait list. I'm so excited to open tickets for Educate and Rejuvenate again. And we have many of you who are also excited as well. Somehow somebody on our website figured out how to buy a ticket. We still have no idea how because it's not listed for sale anywhere. But she emailed and she's like, I just bought a ticket. When is it? <laughs> That's how much she loved the event last year. So we're so excited that you're all eager and ready to purchase your tickets again. It's coming soon. But if you're listening and you're like, what is Educate and Rejuvenate? It is our virtual teacher conference that we do each summer. Um, Last year was our first year. This will be the second year. We're doing it the last week of June. It is going to be a fabulous time. 
Um, we have brought two incredible keynotes in. And again, I can't tell you who they are yet. That's part of what we're going to be revealing at our reveal party, I'm going to mention. And then we have 60 speakers this time. So even more than last time, we have a clear teacher track for our teachers. Then we have a parent track for our homeschool parents. And then we have some that are applicable to both. So it's going to be kind of a choose your own adventure. So many great sessions. You're going to have even more time to watch them than you did last year. So be sure to stay tuned for that info. What we're going to do on March 28th, we're having a reveal party. So we're going to get together. I'm, we're going to be live on a web conference. We're going to maybe do Zoom, but I actually think we might change it to the program we're going to use for the main event. So you can kind of see just how easy and seamless it is. Um, you don't even have to download software or anything. It's really great, but we're gonna, going to come together. I'm going to go over everything that is included in Educate and Rejuvenate. It's really going to be a party. I'm going to give away lots of stuff. Like we're going to give away a teacher bag. We're going to give away a laminator. We're going to give away gift cards. We're going to have you guess and see who knows who the keynotes are based on all the clues we've been dropping on social media. I'll be sharing a few here on the podcast too, but there will be a special bonus for those who attend the reveal party live. And also if you join the wait list right now, just for joining the wait list, you will get our women's history research unit, which is perfect for the month of March for free. And that's normally a paid product in our shop. So be sure to sign up like worst case, you get our unit for free, but we, you will also get an email with that and you'll get the link to the reveal party, which you should definitely join us. Just go to educate and rejuvenate.com and you'll find it. You can also just click on the word event in the header on our website that will take you there as well. So let me tell you a little bit why I'm so excited for this interview with Corinne. So like I mentioned, she is one of the top life coaches who's certified with the life coach school and her focus is on weight loss. So Corinne posted in, there's a Facebook group for coaches who certified through the life coach school. And she was looking for podcasts to be on. And there was like an application and everything. I'm like, oh, I'm going to apply because I love Corinne for one. And also I think she would have some amazing information to share with all of you because she has worked with so many people She's worked with a lot of teachers and she understands the unique struggles that we face, like all the treats in the faculty room and, you know, the lack of bathroom breaks to get all your ounces of water in and everything. We're talking about all of those today. She's just such an expert on all of this. And she was really excited to talk to all of you actually too. So when she saw my application, she was like, oh, I love talking to the teachers. I've got such a large group of teachers in my program. And she was really excited about talking to you. And even after the interview, she was like, oh, this was so great. I love this. I might even air it on my show or whatnot. Um, so she was really excited to talk to you specifically. So I really want you to know that she loves you. She's really thinking of you teachers out there. She thinks that you do so much and you're so incredible. And she wants to help you help you navigate all these things and be able to lose weight if that's something that you want to do. So I'm going to read her bio for you so you can learn a little bit more about her before we dive into this interview. So Corinne Crabtree is a master certified weight and life coach with a mission to help every woman break generational curses in order to improve their personal health and wealth. Corinne lost hundred pounds 15 years ago. And ever since she has dedicated her life to teaching women how to do the same. Corinne Crabtree is one of the leading voices in the weight loss and business industries. She is the host of the wildly successful podcast, Losing 100 Pounds with Corinne, which has been downloaded over 50 million times in 160 countries. Over 1 million women had taken her free weight loss course, and Corinne now serves over 14,000 paid members in the No BS Weight Loss Program. After being a featured expert at the Life Coach School and having her business rank 1,052 in the Inc. 5,000 fastest growing businesses of 2022, Corinne founded the No BS Business Women's Membership. The program provides online entrepreneurs with simple frameworks, tools, and the focus they need to take action and build the business of their dreams. In addition, Corinne offers advanced weight loss, life coach training for coaches, dietitians, and medical professionals who want to improve their clients' weight loss outcomes. You can catch Corinne on Facebook and Instagram talking about all her feelings about the diet and online marketing industries. Her greatest passion is helping women get rid of their old thoughts by using self-love to never quit on themselves again. And she goes over a lot of this on our interview. So let's dive in. I want you to hear all that she has to share. Okay, Corinne, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I love talking about teachers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we're so excited to have you because we've actually had weight loss come up before, like in our calls and everything. And I feel like this is a topic that a lot of teachers have been struggling with a bit more than in past years, even so. 
very timely episode. So Corinne, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and what you do as a weight loss coach? So I grew up really overweight and really poor. <laughs> so uh, my mom was 17 when she had me and she didn't have a college education. She had to work all the jobs. She worked around the clock and she really wanted my brother and I to go and have like a, a private education. So we just never had any money. Like it all went to education and those kinds mm-hmm. of things. So what's funny is when we, I was looking at the notes before this, I wanted to be a teacher so bad when I was little. I remember making my brother play teacher. Like we had to play school. Oh, I love that. Oh gosh, all the time. Like if we didn't play anything until we played school and then I'd, you know, like sit up there, tell him what to do and I'd check his work. <laughs> and then my brother hated school, <laughs> but it was the only path to be able to play what he would want to play. So, um, so I just, I grew up really overweight and I grew up really broke. And in my early thirties, I like hit like a rock bottom place in my life. I was um, a mom to a one-year-old. I was really struggling. I didn't have a job at the time. I had been in a corporate environment and throughout my twenties and then, and I was actually a trainer. So I was like, not in a school, but I I trained um, restaurant managers, which is basically like children. (laughs) (laughs) So I I just, I knew that being a stay-at-home mom wasn't going to be for me. And I also knew that I could not just keep eating my life away. So I decided to lose weight and I lost a hundred pounds and then started a business, a small online business of just helping other women lose their weight with simple steps. I knew that I had battled it all my life and that there was no way that I could lose weight doing something complicated. I could not restrict myself anymore. I was going to only lose my weight doing it in a way that I could live the rest of my life. And if I couldn't live my life, then I wasn't going to do it. And the weight came off. And so that's when I decided I was just going to help other people because I thought no, not enough women are learning that weight loss can be simpler. Uh, it's not easy by any means, but the steps can be simple. And then also the missing component that I filled in for myself was learning how to like myself on the way down the scale rather than just beating myself up and being hard on myself all the time and thinking I was never a good enough mom. I was never a good enough wife. I really started changing how I allowed myself to speak to me. And that I think has been the pivotal point of like what I realized was missing in the diet industry is like, they just kept trying to tell us what to eat and how much, but no one was addressing root causes. Like I spent my nights eating because all day long, I didn't like my life. You know, I'd sit around and just eat and I was taking care of my kid. And then my husband would come home and I'd be emotionally exhausted and tired. He would take him for a bath and then I would eat more because then now I felt bad that he was having to help. You know, it was just like this constant loop all the time. And I think whether you work or not, women just go through this. We, we feel bad no matter what sometimes. And so all of that, I had to change in order to lose my weight. Yes. And I, I totally agree with what you had to say about like, you know, so many of us are shaming ourselves thinking that's, what's going to help us lose weight. Like, oh, if I just like beat myself up, like then like, I'll that'll get me in line, you know, but what you have to say is that you can actually love yourself on the way down and you don't have to deprive yourself. And I think that is such a refreshing message for all these teachers. We're also struggling with all the things you said, like, you know, they come home emotionally exhausted and everything. So yes, I I'm looking forward to everything else you have to share with us today. So one thing I've noticed as I've been coaching teachers in wife, teacher, mommy club, is they're more stressed and burned out than even in past years because of COVID there's these like academic gaps, there's the social emotional gaps in their students. The management is more challenging than it used to be, even for teachers. So like what was working is no longer working and they just get kind of stuck there. And that leads to a lot of emotional eating and then weight gain. So how do you recommend that teachers kind of navigate all of this and and stop that emotional eating? Well, I think like the first thing, this is what I teach my members is you have to really understand what you're making everything mean. So I think we can all agree there are skill gaps. I think we can all agree that, you know, one of the things, what worked pre-pandemic might not work post-pandemic in terms of education and stuff. The problem isn't that that stuff won't work. And the problem isn't that there are skill gaps. The problem is what are we making it mean all day? 
So if you are a teacher and let's say your kids have skill gaps and you're thinking this is my fault or I should do better or, you know, I'll, I'll never be able to save them all. That's a heavy emotional load. It's like, what else do you think will happen when you go home at night? If all day long, you're never interrupting those thought patterns, you're jacking yourself up all day. And what I notice a lot, especially with teachers is you go to work and you hope today's going to be better. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. or it's, it's either I'm hoping today's going to be better or I'm anticipating it's like, oh, it's going to suck. Uh-huh. And so you start off with a certain level of anxiety. It's kind of low. It's kind of just like riding. Then as the day goes on, all of that thinking, like every time time a student doesn't do what you say, or every time, you know, like you're like a kid that you love, you realize like, oh my gosh, they're falling behind or whatever. You start having that internal conversation of I'm failing them. This is on me. Um, You know, things never change, whatever those thoughts are. So you're driving anxiety all day long, which drives cortisol and adrenaline. One of the things I teach my clients to just kind of help them with, especially I think teachers, it's my teachers always say it's between four and six. It's like a lot of them don't even eat at like late at night. Like they have one or two things. They come home and it's the four to six o'clock window. And when they get home, what happens is all of that adrenaline and cortisol dumps out of their body. The body does not know how to, it's like, it's a slow ride up like a roller coaster. And then when the day is over, it's like it flushes it out suddenly. You don't go back to feeling normal. You actually go below normal. So you may come home and it's like, I don't feel anxious anymore. I'm just wore out. I'm white. I'm exhausted. And it's because all day long you fueled on anxiety. And when the anxiety has gone, then you go below normal. What I try to teach my clients is during that window, we want to respect that. We want to know why that's happening so that you're not thinking something's wrong. You're like, when I go below normal, that's my body signaling I need a break. And I've been getting a break in the refrigerator. And one of the smartest things that one of my clients ever said, she she had lost like 80 pounds. And she looked at me and she said, there was this day, Corinne, I was standing with the refrigerator open and I shut it. And I just said, the answer you're looking for is not in there. It stunned me when she said it. I was like, that is like, that didn't come out of my mouth. That was one of the most wise things I ever heard. And so like, when you kind of understand what's going on for you, like when you understand like all day long, I'm having these crappy thoughts. And then when I get home, like my body is doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to dump all that adrenaline. It's supposed to dump all of that. When you really understand what's happening, it's a lot easier to have some compassion for yourself and understanding instead of just thinking some like, I can't do it something's wrong with me. So I think for teachers, the other window is the post eight o'clock. A lot of teachers have kids. So from four to six, it's like, I got all, I've done taking care of these kids. Now I got to take care of my kids. I got to get them through the busy period. And then my dump happens at eight o'clock at night. And for those teachers, it's a little different. They sit down on the couch to get a well-deserved first time break of the day. And a lot of times they sit there And then all of a sudden, all their anxieties come back, like, oh my gosh, we got to do this again tomorrow. Or like, here's all the ways I didn't do it right today. Or I feel guilty. There's like with me, I'd sit on the couch. I mean, I'd taken care of a high needs one-year-old all day long. It was not like I was just sitting at home and doing nothing. My son had undiagnosed autism back in the day. I had no clue. Every night I'd beat myself up. I would sit there with retching guilt. For not being the one putting him to bed and not being like, you know, sexy and hot for my husband and, you know, ready to do boom, boom. Like I wasn't being all of it. So then I would just feel guilty. And we just need to recognize that stuff. There are things that we can do to unwind it. But the first line of defense when these things are happening is always you have to know what's actually happening. It is not that something's wrong with you. There's something wrong with the system going on around you. Like we just need to look for what are you thinking and challenge those things. What's happening? Are there environmental things that you can make easier? Is there understanding about how your body works that can give you some like pause and some compassion? When that happens, 
it's a lot easier to say no in the moment you really want to eat. Yes, I agree with it being the root cause of what is going on. We want to not shame ourselves about all of it and everything. So, but what about the teacher who they're not familiar? Like they don't even realize these thoughts they're having and they, they just see them as like truth. Like, oh yeah, I'm not doing this. I feel so bad. Like how do they get to where they can shift that and kind of notice what's going on? Yeah. You really like for, at least for my clients, I do a lot of like, if you're thinking this, that's actually a thought. Like, I think that as coaches, one of the best things we can do for our clients is teach them, this is what thoughts sound like. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of us do, we're just like, I'm just speaking the universal truth. Yes. (laughs) Kids are behind. You know, it's like, yes, we could agree. Like, this is the interesting thing about thoughts. Thoughts often feel very true. And if we want to go prove them true, we absolutely can. But if they feel true, along with you feeling terrible, then we just need another truth. And we need one that feels equally as true. And I think this is one of the things that's so important is a lot of people shut down on wanting to think in a new way because they think, well, if if I stop thinking kids are falling behind, then what am I supposed to think? Everybody's doing great? No, like because that's not true. Not everyone's doing great. Some are falling behind, but here's another truth. Some of my kids are falling behind and I'm here for them every step of the way. Some of my kids are falling behind, but some aren't that. I mean, just even little shifts like that make you feel a little bit better. So I think it's really important when you start with any time of like, okay, I'm going to listen to what I think. And the vast majority of what is going on in my brain is never 100% true. It just feels true. When you realize you don't have to think amazing things and believe things that are just too fantastical for you. And you're like, oh, you mean we can just shift a little so that I get to experience some relief, a little bit of feeling better and stuff. It's going to help me not only just as a teacher, you'll make better decisions when you feel a little better. You'll also make better decisions in your refrigerator when you feel a little better. <laughs> like it's so all true. About how do we think in a way that allows us to make some better decisions for ourselves? Yes. And when we do like think these thoughts, like, you know, those kind of like bridge thoughts are like, oh, like I, yeah, they're behind, but, or, and, you know, mm-hmm. this other thing, we're n- not taking full responsibility for it. Like you said, like, it's not all our fault that they're behind and that's okay. So we don't need to bear that full brunt of the whole pandemic situation. It's not, it's just how it is. And we can deal with it how the best we can, you know? Well, and then you bring up such a good point because like right now kids are behind. It's like, just tell yourself the truth. I'm I'm always telling my clients, truth will set you free for sure. So like, if you're sitting there thinking, um, like my kids are behind and it's my fault, let's tell the truth. Look at how you spend your day. Is it really your fault? Like, are you just sitting there like, eh, I'm going to smoke a cigarette while you're you know, read a <laughs> really? book? Then yeah, I would be like, yeah, you might want to admit some of this is your fault. You know, like if you're intentionally doing harm to children, yes, that we like, that's a whole subset. But this is what I find. 99% of people like people say, well, what about the teachers who do this? It's like, we're not talking about them. You know what they're not doing? They're not eating over that crap. They don't feel bad at all. They're not sitting guilt ridden and they're not concerned about their children falling behind. They're like, I don't give a crap. And they're probably not listening to this podcast either. No, <laughs> they care less. They're, li- they're trying to find their next smoke, whatever it is. <laughs> but the teachers that really care, who are taking it on the chin and saying, this is my fault. Yes. We got to question that. Like, how are you showing up every day? When if you're showing, like, if, if you're putting in hours at night, you're anguishing, you're thinking about students, you're doing all this stuff. Let's at least tell the truth. Some kids are behind. Think, like, let's blame the pandemic. Let's just, or let's just say, like, and I am such a compassionate person that I would worry about them. That's even different than just like, it's all my fault versus, they're behind. And, you know, I'm the kind of human that's so concerned about them. Yeah. I care about them. Yeah. That will make you feel a little bit better. You can go home 
a lot less stressed than the person who's sitting around wringing their hands and clutching their pearls all day long as if they've done something wrong in the world. Yeah. So I think it's okay to notice that Mick. Okay. I'm feeling this. And the reason I'm feeling this is because I care about these students so much. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Yeah. Okay. Another thing that comes up for teachers a lot, and you probably heard this because I know you work with a lot of teachers in your, um, in your program, but there are a lot of treats in the faculty room. And especially like when we air this, it's like six weeks away from teacher appreciation week. They're going to be bombarded with like all the treats in the world. And a lot of teachers, they even say often, they don't realize that just all of a sudden they're eating a donut or whatever, or they just like, well, I can't help myself. It's been a stressful day. And that's kind of what we just talked about, but right. sometimes they just don't even realize it. So how do you suggest the teachers lose weight, even with all these free treats surrounding them? So there's a few things that they can try. Um, I used to, I had a long time ago, <clears throat> I don't even have this blog anymore, but um, I used to call it the gift of fat. I had several teacher friends back in the day and oh my God, all they did was complain about how like, they would try to be losing weight. And the next thing you know, I was like, all these parents bring this in and you know, and it's Christmas and then it's this. Every holiday. That. Every single Every holiday. holiday. Right. And it, it's like as humans, this is like, we don't know how to say thank you other than donuts. <laughs> it's like, it's how about so just, true. I told uh, one of my teachers what she did is she actually messaged all the parents in the room and just said, the best way you can thank me is to have your child write a letter or you write me a letter. Like, I'll never remember your cookies. I'll never remember your donuts. None of that will last, but I saved the letters. And she said that just that. solved it for her. She was like, no one ever brought me cookies and stuff anymore. And so that's one thing you can like, just take the bull by the horns and like, put it out there. Now that doesn't like change the faculty room. So yeah, <laughs> you can at least mitigate how much crap comes into your classroom. But now we got the faculty room. You have to plan for this. So this is where we want to use a tool called decisions ahead of time, which is where I'm going to decide well in advance, like if teacher appreciation week's coming, I know it's going to be full of food and I'm going to decide ahead of time here, but would be the only things that I would eat and here's how I would eat them. So I'm not going to eat them standing in a kumbaya with other teachers complaining about you know, my work week, <laughs> that's not enjoyable. Like if you really start like fleshing it out on paper, like I don't tolerate this kind of eating anymore. And here's why I don't enjoy it. And it's like, I don't want to eat cookies while complaining because then I don't even get to enjoy the dang cookie. So we come up with some parameters for ourselves. Like if I am going to eat some stuff, what deserves space in my belly? Like what, like my, um, one of my coaches in my membership, she calls um, her belly is like the VIP space at the club. Her mouth is the velvet rope. And the only thing that goes past the velvet rope is anything that deserves space in the VIP room. <laughs> so, I love that analogy. Yeah. She is like, I have got VIP foods. And then I got foods that are like, that is like some clown wearing tennis shoes and cutoffs trying to get into the club. And she's like, no. So, and how often do you grab one of those treats and you're like, oh, that was not even worth it. You not know, worth so. it. exactly. <laughs> so you just kind of think about this ahead of time. You kind of like lay out your own, like, this is what deserves space. This is, this is like, if I'm going to have things, these are the things I would really enjoy. And here's how I would want to enjoy them. The other thing that I think is key is you've got to visualize, we call it real visualization up in my place. It's like, a lot of times when you hear visualization, it's all like, you're visualizing amazing and like, you know, I don't know, it's some kind of like yoga voodoo crap. I want real visualization. You see yourself walking into the teacher's lounge and everything in you is like, I should eat that. I deserve it. It is teacher appreciation. What you want to visualize every excuse known to man that you're going to come up with. And you want to see yourself saying, I knew I would think all of this, mm -hmm. but I'm choosing not to. That's powerful visualization. And you got to do that for a couple of weeks beforehand because your brain doesn't know that this isn't happening. When you're visualizing and you're anticipating what might be hard and you see yourself saying, no, 
I knew I would think this, but I'm choosing different this year. It's like dress rehearsal. So then when you walk in, what you don't want is to walk in and the only conversation your brain has is the one it had last year, because that was the dress rehearsal for this year. You want these new ones so that it can want it and be like, oh, and we're also supposed to say no, or we're also supposed to say this, and we're also going to do this. That's like two approaches that I think really help like navigate those situations. I'm interrupting this episode for just a moment because I want to let you know about some new options we have available for coaching. If you want to thrive as a teacher with support completely personalized to your teacher life, struggles, goals, and needs, I take a limited number of one-on-one clients and I would love for you to be one of them. We'll work closely together via Zoom calls, schedule conveniently according to your schedule, plus Voxer, which is a walkie-talkie app where you can get personal coaching from me right from your pocket. Plus, you'll also get all the benefits of group coaching and our resources because Wife Teacher Mommy Club credit is included with every one-on-one package. And that credit can even be applied to a current membership if you are already a club member. Go to wifeteachermommy.com slash coaching to learn more and fill out a no obligation application. Talk soon. I love that visualization. And like you mentioned, like right now for teacher appreciation week, if you're listening right now, you can start that now and like be ready for when all the treats come that that's such a great tool. And I think both of those, both with the, like sending the message to the parents, like how many teachers like that's so simple, but not something you might think of doing, you know, or some of us might be like, Oh, I can't say that. I can't do that. But I'm sure a lot of those parents, like I'm a parent too. And if I were like, Oh, all I need to do is write a letter. That's easier. Like, I mean, I feel like it's great for everybody. So I I love that. So, um, another thing that comes up, we've got like all these different things that have come up with weight loss. So drinking water, as you know, as we all know, is an important part of weight loss. And we usually have like a certain number of ounces we're trying to hit, but a lot of teachers say that, well, I only get like this one time to like, you know, eat lunch and go to the bathroom. And it's like 20 minutes by the time you walk your kids down and back and everything. And that can mess with both like like how much water you can drink because the bathroom breaks, you know, and then even like, you know, some eating plans or whatnot might be like, oh, you need to eat at this time or only eat when you're hungry. But what if you're not hungry yet? You know, so basically you just have this predetermined schedule. You want to figure out your water and your food. What are your suggestions for that? Yeah. So we teach this inside my membership because this, this apply, we have a lot of shift workers too. So it's like teachers have this nurses and doctors, like there's all types of professions where, or just even like, um, like myself today, I'm doing six back to back podcasts in a row, six hours. And I'm just sitting here drinking water, like, you know, and I'm going to, at some point regret myself. (laughs) (laughs) So this is my suggestion. Number one with the water is you can turbo drink. So what that means, a lot of my teachers, they get up early in the morning and they will drink like a good 20 to 24 ounces super early so that basically they're urinated out before class starts. And then about an hour, like they'll keep water. It may have to be room temperature. So if you're an ice cold diva, this might not work. (laughs) We got to stay in the somewhere. Yeah. Stay in the steel tumbler. It'll still have ice in it. <laughs> there you go. But you can, you can just simply drink, um, about an hour before your break, go ahead and drink like another 20, 24 ounces that way, by the time you're eating and it's time to go, you should be able to urinate out then. And then the second school's over or 20 minutes before you're going to be leaving, you drink like another 20 to 24 ounces. Now you're going to be more of a swigger, which is not that big a deal. Like I drink a liter and I can drink this literally in five minutes. Yeah. Cause I'm down. So <laughs> sometimes we just have to make some sacrifices to get where we, we can either make excuses or we can make some sacrifices, but you can't do both. So what you want to do is like maybe like 20 minutes before you leave school, you can go ahead and start drinking. Then anything else you drink the rest of the day is now in bonus land. So you've already nailed almost all the water requirements you need for the day just by turbo drinking in three spots. And then if like, I know for um, me, I, I don't mind getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. So I continue to drink throughout the evening, 
But if you, if it really disrupts your sleep, if you're the kind of person who can't go back to sleep and you need to be able to not, you know, pee all night long, then cut it off at least two hours before bedtime. Yeah. I love this concept of turbo drinking and I had never heard of it until I heard it from you on your podcast. Like it's just such a, no, you're like, Oh, it's like totally broken down. I can do this. Like no more excuses. Like, well, yeah. And the other thing you were asking about is times of like timed eating. Now this is a real thing. And this is what I tell people all the time. You have a couple of options. Um, like a lot of my teachers end up having to eat lunch at like 10, 15, like when was that? Yeah. It was like, when was that lunch hour? I don't know, but you can either just not eat breakfast and you'll be hungry by 10, 15, more than likely. Um, which is so funny. Cause a lot of people are like, oh, you know, don't eat breakfast. It's like, I'm not saying don't eat breakfast. Cause it's bad. I'm saying, if you want to be hungry at lunch, don't eat breakfast. You know, we're just trading, but a lot of people, when they listen to their natural hunger, they realize they've been eating breakfast for a long time and they actually weren't really hungry. Like my mom is here. She's recovering from shoulder surgery. Every day I'm like, you know, hunkered around her around eight o'clock. Like, you want me to make you some breakfast? You know, ugh. she's like, I am not hungry. Every She finally told me today, she's like, stop asking me. Like around 10 or 11 is when I get hungry. And my mom's lost like 120 pounds. But like, so there's one thing you can do. The other thing that you can do is, You just go ahead and eat at your normal time, knowing that if you're not hungry, you're just not going to eat much. If you're already not hungry and you eat just a little, you may be sitting there going like, womp, womp, I don't get to eat much, but you also don't need to. So if you're just like, I wish I could eat more, it's like, not really. I would like to eat more, but what I really wish is I'd lose my weight. Like just tell them truth in those moments. So I just tell people do some timing. Some people have super late lunches and then they feel like that screws up their dinner. You just want to in the beginning, because I'm, I'm all about listening to your body. We're not going to count calories and macros and complicate things. My whole thing is it may take you two to three weeks of playing with your eating to know like, okay, now I'm in a rhythm this leads me to be hungry during this time, or this is just enough. Or like uh, today is a good example because I have so many podcasts. I was not hungry for breakfast at all, but I also knew that the first opportunity to eat was 3 PM. So it was either eat when I'm not hungry or do a bunch of podcasts and feel like, but by noon. And I was like, I don't want to feel like, but by noon. So I went ahead and ate a breakfast. I was like, this is a breakfast that would fuel me for six hours and this will be fine. And that's what I chose to do. So some, like sometimes what we're, when we're listening to our body, we're not just listening to the immediate signals our bodies are sending. We're listening to the overall picture that our body needs. So you might have to be listening to the future version of you. Who's going to be sitting there going like you needed to eat at 10, 15, because here I am sitting at two 30 dying. So you want to listen to her needs too. Yeah. So it's really about just being mindful and intentional about like your whole day and like what your body needs that day. I feel like that clears things up so much. Okay. So along the lines of that, a lot of teachers, and I guess we kind of talked about this already though, but I, we touched on it at the beginning, but I want to talk about it a little bit more. Um, a lot of people try to shame themselves into losing weight. Like they think like, if I just keep beating myself up, myself up or looking in the mirror and being like, oh, you're so fat, you need to lose weight or whatever. Like that's going to drive me and motivate me to lose weight. But what I've actually even personally found recently is the opposite. Like when I love myself along the process, that seems to help. But I think a lot of people, like even for me, it took some time to really understand that. So how is it that you teach this concept of loving yourself all the way down? Well, here's one thing that I know that's common in women is that many of us are hard on ourselves. And if being hard on ourselves worked so well, we'd all be thin. Obviously, that's not the magic pill. (laughs) That is not the motivating factor. It just doesn't work. It sometimes when you're really hard on yourself, you might see yourself make different choices. But that doesn't mean that it works. Because to me, true weight loss is I lose my physical weight. I also lose my emotional burdens. And talking like a jerk to yourself is an emotional burden. So I don't want anybody losing weight and still not liking them. 
Like if the only way to lose weight is to beat yourself up, what do you think the answer to keeping it off is? Well, I'll have to be hard on myself when I don't have the weight or I will gain it back. So your solution or like the equation is, you know, be hard on myself for the rest of my life just so I can be thin. (laughs) And that sounds terrible. (laughs) I know. Because if you ask somebody, why do you want to lose weight? I just want to be happy and proud of myself. It's like, okay, well, this method won't do that. Like the best way that I tell people, because it's very hard for someone who is hard on their body and hard on themselves is to say like, you're going to love yourself. I think that's such a far reach. There are stages in between. Number one, we can cut, we can just stop the bleeding. When you are being terrible to yourself, you can just say, I'm not going to talk to myself like that anymore. I've got to figure out a new way to talk to myself. You don't have to have the new way yet, but you at least can start separating in your mind. This is the type of self-talk I just don't want to entertain anymore. When I was losing weight, I called it old Corinne versus new Corinne thinking. I would catch myself beating myself up and be like, now old Corinne, she was always beating herself up. If she made a mistake with her food or she did anything, it likely led to like a weekend of binging or several weeks of eating like whatever she wanted and regaining her weight back. New Corinne, when she says things like, um, you're so gross. Like I used to say this to myself all the time. You're so gross. I can't believe your husband even wants you. Like I used to say that all the time. Oh my gosh. It was just, and it was just like true. Like in my, if you were to ask me like, well, it's true. Why would my husband want to have sex with someone who's like 250 pounds? Like I could argue that this was terrible. And I remember I used to tell myself, old Corinne used to think this, what new Corinne believes is you are worthy of love despite anything like that. At least it didn't mean that I was thinking he thought I was sexy. I didn't have to unwrap all of that, even though my husband did like I had no reason to think that other than social conditioning. And so I would just say like, but you're like, you're learning that he loves you for lots of things. You're learning that you're worthy of love. Like no matter what your size is, like I would just start there Um, The other thing that I think is very powerful for people before they can love their body, sometimes they just have to have compassion that they don't. And so a lot of times I tell my clients, if you're not ready to love your body, at least tell yourself, like, I understand why you feel so bad. When we think these things, it does feel terrible. And then I try with those clients who aren't ready to make the leap to loving their body go back to why do we think we think these things to begin with? Can we at least explain to ourselves? This is probably where it started. It's probably a good reason why my brain is thinking these things. It's hurtful. It's unkind. It doesn't feel good. But I always believe in my heart that no matter how terrible my brain talks to me, it always has a well-reasoned intention. It just doesn't know how to say it. So like, even when my brain would say those things about my husband, it wasn't trying to make me feel bad. It was trying to make me see there are probably other things your husband loves you for. Like that was something that I was like, the day that I started thinking about that, like maybe my brain is so hard on me about my body because what it really wants me to think is like, I want you to take care of your body and I want you to change your health because my health was pretty bad. But I also want you to see He loves you for more reasons. And when I started thinking about those things, like maybe this is my body's, my mind's way of trying to get my focus to be to take care of myself and my focus on my relationship to be more than just what I looked like, but actually about the quality of relationship we had. Like it was such a game changer for me. So I think just even normalizing why sometimes we do talk to ourselves so terribly. It's like, if you really understand where it comes from, and you understand how it started, you feel better already. There's like a relief there that comes behind it. That is fascinating because I've never thought of it that way, but it really is just kind of going that next step, which like, as we learn in coach trading, like just question why, and like, why am I thinking this way? And I love how you're like, oh, but probably the reason is this is my brain's way of doing that. And 
yeah, I just think that was a fascinating way to think about it. I teach a, it's a concept that's a little different than what I learned um, inside our coach training. It's just called the four ends and it's notice, normalize, neutralize, next best thought and action. Mm -hmm. And so I teach it inside my program for my clients to go through. I have found it to be a much easier way for people to quickly feel a little better yeah. Not reach for pie in the sky thoughts. It like it it it's kind of like it's um it's baked into the process to do those bridge thoughts, to do those like little I call them wiggle thoughts. Like, can we just wiggle out of the terrible one into something less terrible? Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's a level up, no matter what. <laughs> you know, I love that, and I love what was that again? It was normalize. It's uh, the first is notice. You have to notice. notice. Your thinking. And then we normalize our thinking and normalizing just means we just ask some questions like, where did I learn this thinking? Um, why do I think my brain might be saying, like, is there a good reason why my brain could be saying something so, you know, awful or so harmful or so crazy, whatever it is. Um, then we go into neutralizing, which is we just want to like, but what's actually happening? Like, there's my story. And then, but I just want to kind of figure out like, but what is really going on here? And so it's like the reset. So it's like, I understand, I know what I'm thinking. I understand why it's here. Now I can reset. And from there, it's a lot easier to be like, all right, well, if I could think something different, what would I think? What's different than this? And how would I act? So it just kind of takes you through like a little process of figuring that out. I love that process and that way you teach it. So if our listeners want to learn more from you, um, what would be their next steps to do that? They can go to nobsfreecourse.com and they can sign up for my, I've got a, like a, th a little video series that just gives you some of the entry level things that I teach for basic ways to get started with losing weight without it being overly complicated and restrictive and all this other stuff. So if you go there, you'll hear like, I will tell you all about my membership. I will teach you the things you need to know. I'll introduce you to my podcast, all my social channels. Like once you sign up for that free course, you get access to all of that stuff. Awesome. So, and that is at nobsfreecourse.com. Mm -hmm. Yep. Perfect. And we will link to that in the show notes. So you can all grab that. And you said, if they go there, they'll get everything else like your podcast and yeah. They'll get all of those links, all that kind of stuff. And then if they're interested, if there's like coaches or people that want to like really learn how to teach some of these concepts, yeah. the weight loss concepts, we have our advanced weight loss certification coming up, starting an um, application start in April, and they can go to the weight loss university.com. If I know you guys have teachers, so they may be interested in like, Ooh, I'd like to like dive deeper and yeah. study this and you know, whatever, For they can sure. go there. but the free course, if you're really interested in the weight loss and like conquering all the reasons why teachers eat and stuff, we have a big group of teachers inside of our membership. Um, and like, I talk to them all the time. <laughs> so I love it. Yeah. I love the teachers. <laughs> I've heard great things about your membership too. So everybody, you are in great hands, but Corinne, if you head on over there, um, is there anywhere, anything else, anywhere else you would like me to send our listeners? Um, if they'd like to find you online, um, they can listen to my podcast, losing 100 pounds with Corinne. I've got like 300 and something episodes. Just know that my podcast is a little bit more saltier. I do <laughs> cussing. <laughs> but if you don't mind cussing, then uh, you will probably love that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I think it's great. Well, thank you so much, Corinne, for taking the time to be here and for sharing all of these tools that I think teachers are going to find so helpful just for taking the time to listen today. So I really appreciate that. If you're enjoying this podcast, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And if you're ready to take the next step with me, then you are going to love Wife Teacher Mommy Club. Our top selling resources for pre-K through sixth grades have been used and loved by tens of thousands of teachers. And the club gives you one-click access to all of them to meet the needs of every child you teach while saving tons of time. Plus, you'll have our certified life coach in your back pocket with several monthly workshops and an Ask a Coach portal you can use 24-7. The combo of resources and coaching is our secret sauce to your best teacher life. Think of my team and I as your personal team, doing the lesson planning for you and on the sidelines coaching you and cheering you on as you focus on what you do best, impacting the children you teach. Plus, if you're loving this podcast, 
You'll also have access to our private podcast, Just for Members, where I continue the conversation with all of our guests with members-only bonus episodes. And don't forget the club with VIP access to Educate and Rejuvenate, our summer conference, and our private Facebook community full of like-minded educators supporting each other. You do so much for everyone else, so it's time to invest in yourself. Your teacher friends, Joss, will drop when they see just how quickly you finish your planning. Not to mention the glow of the happier, more fulfilled you. Head on over to wifeteachermommyclub.com to learn more.